This is a car that you're very familiar with. You've seen it a whole load of times on the show. We brought you a story from Japan, then you saw it at the Auto Expo, and very recently, we brought you the first drive from Indonesia. But it's all set for launch here now, and we've got our hands on both the petrol and the diesel variants. Still, the big question everyone is asking, is it just a people mover, or is it a good family car to own as well? Well, that's what we're going to find out. Look closely at the Mobilio and the nose gets your attention first. The Brio Amaze legacy is quite clear, but Honda has made the chin of the car much sportier. There's also an attractive looking bar of chrome across the grille and Honda has used a clever lightning bolt-like feature along the doors. This attractive detail also has a practical use. It effectively drops the otherwise climbing window line and allows the rear of the car to appear more airy. What you also notice is the sheer size. 4.4 meters long with a 2650 millimeter wheelbase, the Honda has a lot of space on the inside. MPVs are all about space and the Mobilio has used slim seats and a compact dash to maximize effect. There is so much space in fact that legroom on the second row is surplus and back support on the second row is pretty good too. What's not very nice is the fact that the Brio's basic looking dash has been carried over. Honda has tried to spruce up the variants with wood-like plastic trim and a touchscreen audio system with GPS. But it doesn't really help lift the ambience too much. Other features you can get on the top end variant are a rear view camera, Bluetooth, steering mounted controls and leather seats. Now what I really like about the Mobilio is this. The one touch tumble seat. I need to use just one hand. It's so light and easy. And it opens up so much space to get into the back seat. Which, let's find out, has how much space. It's actually really comfortable. Uh, the only problem is you sit a bit low. But then you can also recline this seat. Yeah, it gets much better. But, it's not only that, even with the third row of seats up, look how much luggage I can get into the boot. The Mobilio diesel has the same 1.5 ID tech from the Amaze, with the same power and torque figures. The diesel idles smoothly and it's much more silent when you rev it. The 100 bhp engine also has a lot of pulling power and grunt and this can be felt in just about any gear. It's a strong engine, there's barely any lag. So you find power throughout the range, lift your foot off, put it down, you can get a move on easily. So be it city traffic or overtaking out on the highway, you really find it easy to drive and in fact, it's quite an enjoyable engine. What's also clear after a bit of driving is that Honda has really worked hard to eliminate the negative feedback they were getting about this engine being too noisy. There's more insulation here and the fuel injection timing has been retuned to make it smoother too. You still hear the engine when you put your foot flat down, but it's more refined than in the Amaze. So that's much nicer now. The Mobilio also gets Honda's 1.5 really rev-happy and sporty 117 bhp petrol from the city. Get the power on and a sporty snarl is accompanied by a progressive shove in the back. The petrol engine, really typically Honda, very free revving. You can pull it cleanly all the way to the red line. And Somehow it lands up feeling a bit too sporty in this car. Now that's not something we normally complain about, but it feels a bit of a misfit here. And we're being so critical only because people who look for an MPV are looking for a practical option, not really for a spirited drive. But if you do want that mix, this petrol engine will definitely put a very large smile across your face. Out on the highway, it cruises like a dream and has a very strong top end. The third gear is really tall, letting you pull all the way from 20, literally, to 150 kilometers an hour. 
and it's not only that, even in stop-start traffic, it's perfectly at ease. The Mobilio also gives almost no indication of the extra weight being carried behind the driver. In fact, it feels positively car-like in its manners. The steering weighs up quite nicely around corners, points the car exactly where you want it to go, it's responsive. It's only a straight line at higher speeds. It lacks that little feel of centre. But it's really not something you're going to have to complain about. You still feel quite confident driving the Mobilio. The cohesive manner in which it goes around corners is truly impressive. And though there is some roll, the Mobilio feels so at ease shifting directions quickly. So, it always feels composed and you can really enjoy driving it on a winding section of road. Even out on the highway, at high cruising speeds, it really feels stable and planted, never getting flustered. It's easy to forget that you're driving an MPV. With 189mm of ground clearance and a long wheelbase, the ride of the Mobilio is pretty good too. There is an underlying stiffness, but otherwise it absorbs the bumps pretty well especially once you get the speed up. It's a nice flat ride overall, so passengers in the rear will be pretty comfortable too. Sitting in the back seat of the Mobilio, you just get this feeling of spaciousness. There's so much glass area, the cabin is really nice and airy. There's lots of space, there's good leg room, head room. And even for the third passenger, it's going to be quite easy to fit in. Floorboard's flat, it's nice and wide. Um, but the seats themselves, not all that comfortable. The squab is a bit short and the seat feels a bit firm. The firmness of the seats though is felt more in the top trim leather version. The fabric seats are much softer and feel more comfortable. There is an AC vent for the rear and lots of storage spaces for bottles and things for the middle and third row passengers. So on practicality, the Mobilio really scores. Well, after having driven the Mobilio, here's what we think. This car has a few flaws. The seats are not the most comfortable and the interiors, which are from the Brio and the Amaze, well, a little lacklustre. And though there is a mock wood trim, it really doesn't do much for the cabin and we feel it could have been much nicer. But there's no denying that there are a lot of great attributes to this car as well. It's hugely practical, nice, spacious, airy cabin. And the boot is a good size too. It's got a strong engine, it drives really well, and it looks really nice too. So it's not just a people mover. It's much more of a proper family car and one that you'd like to own.